What's going on, musician and producer friends? I'm Matt Vanacoro here with my good friends at Modalix, and we are checking out Beat Scholar. Specifically, I'm going to take you into the first 10 minutes of Beat Scholar today. Beat Scholar is proof that anyone can make creative and intuitive rhythm tracks, and you can craft incredibly complex meters and patterns in a flash with Beat Scholar. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your installation email after you've purchased Beat Scholar. You've got the ability to download the version that is appropriate for your computer. Once you've downloaded and run the installer, you're then going to be able to select Beat Scholar as an instrument, or in some cases as a MIDI effect, after you've opened up your favorite sequencer or DAW. Beat Scholar works everywhere, from Logic to Pro Tools to Cubase, you name it, you can open it up. So right now, I've got myself a straight-up instrument track in Logic. You know, it's a MIDI-style track that is looking up to load up a virtual instrument. I'm going to use an AU instrument. So I'll go ahead and I'll go open up the instrument area on the channel strip. And I'll scroll down to find my AU instruments, and there it is. I see Modalix as a category. I got Beat Scholar, and I can open up a stereo version or even open up a multi-output version. I'll get into the multi-output version later. Let's just open the stereo one for now. So I open that up and there's the Beat Scholar UI. And the first time you run it, it'll have a trial activated. You're going to look to drag your license file there. So if you remember, in your email, it was attached at the bottom. So I'll just take that license file, drag it and drop it. And there we go. I'm now licensed and activated. If I ever need to deactivate it later, I can always click on the Beat Scholar logo there and I can deactivate it to move it to another computer. Although you do get three activations, so you can activate it on your laptop and on your desktop and you even got a spare. So here's the Beat Scholar window and it's got that This Is Beat Scholar preset loaded up. So I'll hit play. Very cool. So I'm hearing some really interesting rhythmic divisions. Each of these lanes has different patterns and different divisions set up in it. They're not necessarily restricted to one instrument. So you can get your cool, you know, combinations of instruments in these different lanes. So if I listen to the first one, you'll hear it's mostly hi-hat. Got an open hi-hat in there too. If I pop up that second one, a crash and a snare. So if I wanted to, down here, here's my different instrument selections. If I wanted to change one of those to hand clap, for example, I'll just click on hand clap, and I'll change that second note to hand clap in that track. And I can change the second one here as well. It's as simple as that, it's painting your little rhythmic pie with a different color. Now, if I wanted to divide up and get one of these cool divisions and slices, it's as simple as right-clicking any of these little cells. So I've got this little uh, circle here, I'll right-click it, and then I can slice it. I'll slice it up into four. And let's say I wanna add an extra hand clap just on the very last slice before it goes on to the next one. So let's see what that sounds like. So it adds that little extra clap in there. And that's really cool. And again, you don't have to be restricted to just that instrument. I can take a snap and put it in there in the same pizza. And that's just gonna enable you to be incredibly complicated in what you create. And you come up with some really great combinations. So Beat Scholar is using its own internal sounds right now. So if I go down here on the bottom part, I can switch presets that use different drum sets. I don't have to use the one that loaded up initially. I'm going to try to switch over to Electro Funk. I like that one. There we go. So you notice that it maintains my pattern but switches over the sounds to use a different sound set. Now, if I load up a preset up top, that's gonna to load up different presets from you know top to bottom. It's gonna load up not only a different pattern, but a different kit as well. So you'll see the pattern change and the kit change. So just be careful when you're picking those because if you spend a lot of time working on a pattern and you only wanna change the sound, you're gonna to wanna to do that down here. Okay, you can also manipulate any one of these sounds with the effects on the right side. You can change the individual samples. We'll get into all that. Right now, we're just looking at that first 10 minutes. Now, if you come up with a great pattern and you want to use multiple outputs to mix this in your DAW, it's actually not too difficult to do. So I'll just delete that and let's make another software instrument. Okay, I'm going to do an empty channel strip. Okay, so from here, 
when I set up the instrument, instead of picking the stereo version, I'll go to Modalix Beat Scholar, and I'm going to pick the multi-out, the 17x stereo version there. All right, so I've got my initial sound up again. But this time, I'm going to go to this master volume section right here, and I'm going to change it from stereo to multi-out. And now in my mixer in Logic, I can go ahead and add all those aux tracks and every element of this is going to get routed to a separate track. Now it doesn't route the individual lanes to different tracks. That wouldn't be very helpful for a mix engineer. You know, I don't want to mix my hi-hat the same way I mix my kick drum. So this, what's great about this is that for a musician and composer, being able to put the different sounds in different lanes is extremely helpful. But then you get the best of both worlds because as a mix engineer, I can listen to just the kick drum or just the snare. And then I've got the ability to pan and do all the things I need to individually to those instruments. So if I want to run the kick drum through my favorite kick drum channel strip, I want to run my hi-hat through a specific delay and reverb, I can do all of those things when I'm using a multi-output instrument. It gives you the ability to mix everything separately. And of course, if you wanted to group those into a folder so you don't have to see them all at once, Logic lets you do that as well. It's really handy. All right, there's one last thing that's really cool is you can load up Beat Scholar as a MIDI effect. All right, so let me do that. I'll go to Drum Kit Designer. I'll open up just a regular stereo one. Let's keep it super simple now. So I've got a nice little, let's use the Brooklyn kit. However, I want to use Beat Scholar to sequence my sounds. So what I'll do is I'm going to open up as a MIDI effect. And once again, I'll go to Audio Units and choose Modalics. And there's Beat Scholar MIDI. So I choose that and check it out. I'm going to have Beat Scholar triggering the built-in regular Logic Drum Kit. Isn't that amazing? It just triggers it and I'm good to go. So you can use Beat Scholar to trigger any of your favorite electronic or acoustic drum kits of choice. If I want to get this on my favorite 808 plugin, I can. If I want to load up any third party drum machine uh, plugin that has samples that I love to use, I can use Beat Scholar to trigger those sounds. Now, you can also sequence and take those patterns and pop them into your sequence. So right now, let's say I like this beat. All I do is shift and click this MIDI pattern that I've made. So I've got a couple of different patterns, right? I've got a beat, I've got a fill. I shift and click and move that. And when I drop it in, it's going to drop the MIDI pattern. All right. I'll import the tempo information, but I'm at 120. It's not going to change much. So now there's the MIDI of the pattern that I made here. So now that I've got that MIDI pattern dragged in, what I can do is I can just get rid of Beat Scholar as a plugin and there's my MIDI. And there it goes, it ends right there. You can do that in a regular setup if you're using Beat Scholar as your instrument. So I'll go ahead and set up a Beat Scholar stereo track again just to show you. So let's say I've got it here. Okay, Beat Scholar set up as an AU instrument plugin. All right, I'll open it up. And again, let's say this time I like the fill, right? I'm gonna take that fill, I like it. I'll shift and click drag the MIDI in there and pop it in there, okay? So I've got a nice fill in there. Now again, if I play, uh-oh, it's continuing to play. So I want to turn off the sequencer part of Beat Scholar and just use Beat Scholar as a sound source here. So in order to do that, I click here. All right, click right in the preset menu. And I just go to enable, and I'm going to disable the sequencer. So right now the sequencer is enabled. I click it. Look at that. It goes dark. And now it's only going to play MIDI inside of that track and use Beat Scholar as a sound source. So you've got a lot of different ways that you can use and operate Beat Scholar. You can use it as an instrument on its own track. You can use it as a MIDI plugin to trigger other, your favorite drum instruments. And you can use it to generate MIDI, or you can simply use it and use the built-in sequencer for your entire song to do a backing track or a backing beat and switch as needed. You can switch with different notes. So if I pop that back on again, just enable the sequencer. You see, if you look at the bottom right corner, we've got different notes that will trigger the sounds. 
and it indicates it in the bottom right corner. So it's super flexible. There's so much more to go into, but that's your first 10 minutes. Enjoy. I think you're going to really love Beat Scholar from Modalics.